<laughs> awesome. So for those who are still on, Els, you can feel free to, to stay on or you can jump off if you need to. But we have Alexander Great coming up in a few minutes. So he will be doing a magic show for us, which is a little bit different from a lot of other online summits you might see. We know that you, want, you don't want to sit through a bunch of lectures for an entire day. So take a little break from work and tune in for uh, our magic show with Alexander Great. We'll be on in a few minutes. Since then, his efforts have garnered him first place trophies for stage magic at the Pacific Coast Association of Magicians Convention for two consecutive years. And he's also performed at Hollywood's famed Magic Castle, where he received an achievement award. He's also appeared at Caesar's Palace in Vegas. So here we have Alexander Great, straight from Vegas. Take it away. All right. Well, welcome, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm live in Las Vegas, and I'm going to do a little bit of magic for you. And uh, we're going to have some fun. The best way to enjoy this is just forget everything you know about reality. That's kind of how magic works. So I was thinking um, about some stuff that I could do today that would be interactive and uh, amazing through this live storm medium. And what I'm going to do is some sleight of hand magic, and then I'm going to involve you in some interactive magic. And for the last thing I'm going to do, we're all going to get involved together into something that's really hard to believe can even happen. Um, but before we begin, I thought I would just start with a newspaper. I was thinking to myself, what could be more ordinary or more every day than a newspaper? I mean, you read it, you recycle it, you place it under your pets, right? You wrap fine china in it. <laughs> Let me page through it real slow. Take a good look and, and remember some color or picture or article. Uh, I don't know how good the screen is. If you've got really good eyes, you could even read an article and uh, tell us about it later. But I don't think the DPI is that good. But here's the illusion. All right, I'm going to create the illusion of tearing this newspaper. I won't really tear it, but your senses will deceive you. Never tore the paper. That was just an illusion. Now, let me make it a little more convincing. Never tore the paper. <laughs> no, no, no. Now, usually, by the time I get to this next part, people in the audience insist that I am actually tearing this paper. And this is simply because they see, or rather think they see, strips of newspaper. See, some of you will think I'm, I'm tearing because you think you see the strips of newspaper and uh, others, perhaps with their microphones turned up, will, will insist that I'm tearing it because you hear strips of newspaper being torn. But Carissa has piped in newspaper tearing sounds through the chat just to deceive you. You can tell them, Carissa. We've actually gone that far for your entertainment. So although it looks like I tore this into, I don't know, 60 pieces, I actually never tore this paper at all. Isn't that great? <laughs> you don't believe me, do you? Okay, all right, you guys don't believe me. You wanna see the paper? Did you remember something? A picture, an article, something? All right, great, let's page through it. Make sure you can take a good look at it. That's the front page we saw before. There we go, that's uh, inside there. Something? <laughs> yeah! So that's what this morning's all about, magic-wise. How? Oh, yeah, a lot of people are asking how that works. I'm actually part of the uh, Las Vegas recycling program, so we do that all time free, so that's how that works. <laughs> now, did you like that? We're going to do something even stranger. Um, this is an interactive piece of magic that's going to involve one of you. And um, what we're gonna do, I'll have uh, either Carissa or someone else pick someone. Because if I pick someone, you might think I set that up. So go ahead and just choose someone who'd like to participate in something incredible, okay? Do you see the person? 
I don't see them. I don't need to see them, but it'd be great if I could. But as long as there is a person, you want to pick. Would anyone from the audience like to jump in? They All never right, want we have... to help when you ask them. <laughs> <laughs> we have Raphael. I'm going to invite him up here. Notification. Oh, All right, give us give us one minute, Raphael. We just invited you up on stage. Oh, Raphael is. Does he want to help? Yeah. He has no choice. <laughs> All right, maybe not Raphael. If if no one wants to volunteer, it might have to be me, and I have no clue what I'm getting myself into. Oh yeah, yeah. Be careful. Ah, <laughs> uh, there he is. This is the equivalent of stepping off the stage, walking through the aisle and saying, would you like to help with an illusion today? And all the husbands point to their wives and vice versa. <laughs> all right, Raphael, are you, are you on? Can you hear me? Hey, I can hear you. Okay, cool. That's good. How you doing, Raphael? I'm good. How you doing? Excellent. All right. So, do you know one playing card from the other? Okay. What's the other? Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. All right. <laughs> just want to make sure you know <laughs> the names of different playing cards. Because, obviously, I can't come from Las Vegas to where you are and have you pick a card. Although, that would be amazing. <laughs> but I'm not that good. So, I'm going to do that through the screen essentially. Yep, Here's what we're going to do. I've got this little party bag here. You can see it's empty inside, but actually yeah. it, it's not empty. There's an invisible deck of playing cards. Okay. You have to use a little imagination in this. And uh, the, the rest of you watching, you have to use a lot of imagination. So, Raphael, um, I'm going to take these invisible cards and yeah. In a minute, I'm going to throw them and they're going to come through the computer screen and land in your hand. So I want you to catch them. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, here they come. One, two, three. Okay, caught. Oh, good. He's got them. Give him a hand. That's good. That's not easy to catch them through the screen. Okay. Now, Raphael, we haven't met yeah. you, right? Yeah. Well, don't sound so happy about it. <laughs> now, what I want you to do is shuffle those cards. They're bigger than normal cards, but I wanted to make sure everyone could see. <laughs> Go ahead, shuffle them. And since I can't see you, shuffle I'm them. assuming that he's giving them a good overhand shuffle, right? Yeah. Okay. Now, this is where it gets weird. Spread those cards out, Raphael, and then you reach in and take okay. one card out. Okay. Oh, you have it? Okay. Now yeah. it's invisible. So even if I could see you, I couldn't see what your card is. But I want you to decide what that card is. And don't tell me yet, but make sure you have a definite playing card in mind. Don't okay. let the cards in the background influence you, but... This is about the size of the cards. It could be any one of these, of course, an ace, a two, a three, a four, a five, a six, a seven, an eight, a nine, a 10, a jack, a queen, a king. It could be a heart, a club, a diamond, a spade, 52 different possibilities. But you decide, Raphael, and let us know when you've decided. I'm excited. Okay, now. Turn that card backwards. It's very important that it's backwards and put it back in there. So okay. only this one Raphael card is backwards. Okay. Okay. This is pretty strange, huh? <laughs> okay, so now you take the entire deck with your yes. card backwards and and hold your hand back like this. Because you have to use mm -hmm. a lot of force to get it back. And what we're going to do is have you throw it through the screen. I'm going to try and catch it in the party bag here. 
On the count of three, ready? One, two, three. Boom. Did you see that? Right, right through the screen. That's incredible. But not only did you throw it, you threw it so hard, Raphael, that those cards became visible. Wow. That's okay. That's actually better. He has smacked the invisibility out of the cards. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? He put a card backwards in there when they were in. So nobody knows that backwards card except one person in this platform, and that's you, Raphael. So for the first time, in a loud, clear voice, tell me what card did you put backwards in here when they were invisible? Seven spades. Seven of spades. Yeah. No, that's wrong. Raphael, remember when I called you on the phone and paid you the money? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. Seven of spades, a very distinct card. Most people don't pick that. Most people pick either ace of spades or queen of hearts, but you picked the seven of spades. One last question. Whereabouts did you place it? Right side, left side, what? Any side. I just put it. <laughs> oh, okay. So left side. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run through these, and I want to get real close to the screen because I want you folks to notice that, of course, these parts are all facing up as they should be. But Raphael, for the left side, put a card backwards earlier. He told no one the name of this card. And, oh, my gosh, look. Refresh the screen, Elena. It just looks a little dark. There is only one backwards card in the deck can y'all see it yeah oh my gosh if that was a seven of spades that would truly be amazing let me take it out i'm gonna now turn it around okay there i'm turning it around what do you expect here come on <laughs> this is easy <laughs> you, you realize if i get this wrong i'm not gonna get paid today <laughs> Concentrate on your card, Raphael. This one card is a oh, oh, oh. spades. <laughs> wow, that's so cool. Are you psychic, Raphael? Wow, 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 wow. Raphael, psychic. I think that's what's going on. Okay, <laughs> you need to use that power for this company. That's awesome. Give him a nice hand. You did a good job. Yeah. Oh, that was fun. Let me Andy's comment this little table in real close. I hesitated about doing this one because I thought, well, I want to show these folks some really amazing sleight of hand, but you know, it's kind of hard to see through a screen. It's one of those things that would be better, quite frankly, if you were here with me in my living room. But I'm going to take a chance, I'm going to do this anyway, real slow, so you can see a little bit of magic with some coins. A close-up magic is kind of like the, uh, the poetry of magic because you can watch real close and yet the closer you watch, the less you'll see. I have this little pad here. I tipped it toward you, so hopefully you can see this close. I've got simply two hands, nothing up my sleeves, and four ancient Chinese coins, <laughs> which I cleverly painted to look just like silver dollars. Yeah, I'm kidding. They're just silver dollars. That's Eisenhower on one side, Eagle Landing on the moon on the other. I'm going to make these coins jump from one hand to the other. Not like that, <laughs> but invisibly. If I close both fists, I just wiggle my thumbs a little bit, and one coin jumps across, leaving three behind on the table. You can see that one there. Let's try that again. Let me walk this one across here, and we'll do it one more time. This is years of practice. <laughs> one there, I'll put three over here. The hands never touch, we just wiggle the thumbs, just a little wiggle. You can hear it, yeah, you can hear it when it gets there. That's two and two. Yeah, it's kind of like banking, huh? With no fees, just two, no more, no less. Over here, just two, no more, no less. Now the hands never touch, I'm gonna do it real slow. Remember, I've got no sleeves, there we go. That's three and one. 
Now, the last one, I'm gonna take these three, hold them real tight here, and this fourth one, I'm gonna take way outside the frame here for a second. Just a little squeeze, even though it doesn't come close, it actually lands there. We've got all four coins together. And that's a little piece of sleight of hand magic with four Chinese coins, or silver dollars, sorry. Isn't that fun? You know, the problem with that trick, they never multiply. Kind of a disappointing job. I, I start with four and, and I end with four. I haven't found a way to make money multiply, but uh, when I do, you'll hear about it. I, I won't be doing shows anymore. I'll be buying real estate in <laughs> Newport Beach. People always ask me that, though. They say, hey, if you're so magic, why don't you make money appear? And, and it is a, a great thought. I'm going to try something... Um, kind of interesting. I don't know what exactly is going to happen, but this is a genuine $1 bill, which we'll assume I borrowed from someone from the audience. Hey, Carissa, can I borrow a dollar bill? Oh, thank you. There we go. Oh, I guess now I have to get back to her, though, since I borrowed it, right? All right, so here's, here's a little illusion. If we just take a one, you can see that's George Washington on one side, the one on the other. I'm going to come in real close with my hand so you can watch this. If we just fold it once, twice, and three times, when we open it, George Washington turns upside down. Yes, remain seated, please. <laughs> it's a gift. Now, I was 10 when I learned that, so to me, that was impressive. There was a kid that showed me that in school, and I was like, oh, my God, how does it work? And he's like, you just fold it three times, dude. It works by itself. Stop following me, okay? But I was like obsessed with magic. I had to figure it out how it works. So yeah, this you could do this with any dollar. If you don't know this already, you just fold it three times and it works by itself. So let me do it one more time. Make sure you, you're following. I'm going to come real close this time. You can see that one. My hands are empty. My sleeves are pushed back. And that is a genuine one, okay? So we just fold it once. We fold it twice, and on the third fold, when we open it, it'll be upside down. Now, don't do a fourth fold like that, Raphael. <laughs> I just did a fourth fold. Now it won't work. It will not turn um, upside down. Actually, it turns inside out. Well, that's a good thing. That wasn't your bill then, uh, Carissa. You would have been pretty upset trying to spend this. <laughs> Actually, these are probably illegal. If you get into circulation, uh, can you refresh the screen? I think I'm going to probably get a call from uh, the feds again. <laughs> but before I go on to the next trick, take one last look at a dollar bill like you'll never see it again. It is a genuine bill. There's no tape or glue. It's, uh, I think we have a technical term for this in magic. We call this uh, all screwed up. <laughs> but yeah, that's a little illusion with, uh, with a dollar bill. So uh, I hope you'll go home and try that. <laughs> People always say, hey, teach me a trick. Show me how to do something. So um, how are we doing on time, Elena? Should I go into interactive or do one more trick? Yeah, OK. Oh, plenty of time, plenty of time. Okay, great, great, great. Let me show you. Here's a trick that uh, y'all can do. People always say, hey, teach me a trick. Show me how to do one. I want to learn one. So get yourself a pair of women's pantyhose. Um, <clears throat> you don't have to wear them. <clears throat> you just keep the little white card that keeps them stretched. That's what this is. I got it from my wife. And then you paint one black dot on this side. You do that with a Sharpie. So there's two sides to it. One black dot there four black dots over there, and three over here, and six over here. I see some confused looks. This is like that newspaper trick I did at the beginning, an illusion. It's an illusion. Yeah. And you're going to be disappointed when you see that it's just five spots. That's it. But isn't that funny? Your brain kind of makes assumptions. 
which is how magic works. You assume there's only four if I cover that side. Or you assume there's six when I show that. Because I do it so fast. And the other side, the same thing. There's just two dots. That's all we ever have. But if we cover it there, it looks like one. If I cover it from this side, your brain sort of makes a spot appear there. There isn't one, and you assume there's three. It's kind of an interesting lesson in the psychology of magic. Of course, then if we can add illusion to it, it's even better. We can show that there's six spots on that side and uh, three spots on that side. You know, if you get really good at this, you fool yourself with eight spots. <laughs> so I hope you go home and try that one. Okay, cool. All right. This is pretty cool what we're about to do. Um, I want to do another interactive thing because you guys have been sitting in your chair long time I feel like we need to stretch a little bit so what I'm gonna do is have you all join me in a little stretching exercise and here's how we'll do it just take your hands and you can stand up if you want for this it may be difficult if you're like in a chair or something just shake your hands out get them nice and loose get some blood flowing in those fingers so we got a lot more great content coming up for you after I disappear um, okay, now put your hands in front of your body like this. Yeah, palms out, thumbs down. That's good. Cross the right hand over and lock your knuckles together. Now, if you're left-handed, this is gonna feel kind of weird. All right, wiggle those thumbs. Very important that you wiggle those thumbs. And I can see some of you, you're not wiggling enough. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. And don't let go of this position for like a month, okay? <laughs> and those of you here with me, make sure you do it good. Make sure you guys are all reaching, holding tight, wiggling the thumbs. Very important that you keep the thumbs wiggling and then just locking the knuckles, start to turn to your left. Now, some of you will go further than others. Did you get it? Some of you got it. Raphael, did you get it? Okay, good. Wow, gotta be double jointed for that. That hurts a little bit. Good job. I know, that's a weird one. It's like a, Houdini was double jointed, so he came up with that. Time for one more, and then we're going to do some Q&A. Uh, Carissa will take any questions that you have about me for magic, the psychology of magic, all that kind of stuff. It's lots and lots of fun. Um, we did a card trick earlier with some invisible cards. We're going to try something with those same cards, but um, this time I'm going to have them on a screen right here. And I'd like to bring this screen nice and close. So hopefully you can see these four cards. Now, what I'm about to show you is hard to believe, but we're going to use a little bit of me and a little bit of all of you on this platform, and we're all going to do the magic together. Now, take a good look at these four cards. You notice they're all very different. In a minute, I'm going to ask you to place your finger on one. Now, it's very important that you actually touch your screen and do this. Of course, if you have a touch screen, this could be difficult. You might open up something that shouldn't be open, but hopefully you can touch your screen and do this. Otherwise, you might get confused. And we're going to follow along. You're going to move from place to place. The amazing thing is, even though you're there at home in your office and I'm here in Las Vegas, I'm going to find out exactly where you are. So we've got an ace of hearts here, a two of hearts, an eight of spades, and a jack of spades. Right now, take your finger and touch one of those cards. You may think I want you to pick the ace because that's a popular card. You may think I want you to pick the jack because it's the only face card, or perhaps the eight because it's up here, or the two. But I actually have no idea where your different fingers are touching. You're all touching different cards right now. Is that true? Okay. Now, once you put your finger on there, don't move. 
keep your finger on whatever card you selected. I'm going to add some more cards to make this even more difficult. But don't move your finger. All right. Nine cards in total. Now, here's what we're going to do. Whatever card you're touching, I'm going to count, and you're going to move from place to place. For example, if you touched the Ace of Hearts, I'm going to count four in a minute, and you're going to move from place to place as I count. So as I count, you could go like this. Don't do it yet, but you could go one, two, three, four, or this. One, two, three, four, or one, two, three, four. There's hundreds of possibilities as to the exact pattern that you can move, but never move diagonally, just side to side, up or down, as I count. Are you ready? I will count. Ready? One, two, three, four. And leave your finger on the last place you touched. Now, some of you were on this ten of spades a moment ago, but you're not there now. So I'm going to take it away. Now, once a card has been removed, you can't move on to that space. But you still have eight other cards on which to move. So get ready to move again, this time five times as I count. Ready? One, two, three, four, five. And leave your finger on the last place you touched. Don't move. Some of you were on the ace, but you're not there now. So I'll take it away. Okay, get ready to move two times as I count. Ready? One. Two, and leave your finger on the last place you touched. All right, now some of you were on this two, but since I asked you to move two, you're not there now, so I'm going to take it away. Now get ready to move three times. Ready? One, two, three. Good, leave your finger on the last place you touched. You were on the three, you're not now. I'm also going to take the four away. And that leaves these cards. Keep your finger where it is. Get ready to move again three times. Ready? One, two, three. Good. Leave your finger where it is. Some of you were on the eight, but you're not there now. I'm going to take it away. Now, get ready to move one time. Ready? Move. Okay. Remember, you moved where you wanted to move and started where you wanted to start. But if we all did this together, you all should be on the jack of spades right now. Good job. Give yourselves a hand. That's amazing. Looks like everybody's psychic, right? Did you have a good time? Alex, I know. Chat, I had a but... blast entertaining you, and uh, I'll be happy to take any questions. A lot of people have questions about magic. Yeah, I know you can't read the chat, but everyone is completely mind blown at how awesome. you're doing this <laughs> through a computer. Uh, we, someone, Raphael did have a question. He asked oh, yeah. how it feels to be blowing our mind, and I want to add to it, like doing it virtually too, not having that audience interaction? Yeah, good question. Uh, to be honest, it's pretty weird. I'm a little uncomfortable not getting the, the audio applause because uh, I've done magic like 35 years. And, you know, you always you set up your little table, you go on stage and it's kind of how a magician judges if something's working or not is by the applause you get back from the audience. So when silence, and I don't know if, if other magicians would admit this, but there's a bit of, oh, I hope this is working, you know. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to actually take over for David because he has to head to a call, but we have cool. some other questions. Thank you, David. <clears throat> yeah, so some of us want to know, when you learned magic, were you one of those kids who liked to trick people or did this come later on in life? <laughs> I think it came pretty late for most. You know, most kids are given a magic set when they're about six. Right. Um, that 
happened, but I didn't really care. Uh, it was the influence of other people because there was a friend in, uh, well, actually he wasn't a friend yet in junior high. His name was Robbie and I was 13 years old and they go, oh, you got to go see Robbie. He does magic. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. And so I said, hey, Robbie, show me some magic, you know, which he did. And that just sparked something uh, beyond what's normal because the other boys that were there were like, wow, that's cool. I don't know how you did that. Let's go play soccer. Yeah. <laughs> me, I'm like, no, no. Tell me how no. it works. <laughs> you got to show me, you got it. And finally I, that's, I make that joke in the show. I followed him around So he's like, okay, here, here, here. You can <laughs> learn magic from these books. And I just devoured everything because I was so fascinated by it. So that's how it, um, started and, and that ember has never gone out because you know yeah. making people happy making people go wow yes i can't sing i can't do music so this is how i do that and i enjoy that yeah it's a sense of awe yeah uh nikolai wants to know what's the most difficult trick you've ever performed and guys if you don't know he's performed in las vegas and at the magic castle too in los angeles so he's done a lot that's a really hard question to answer um I'll try to give you um, the, the first example that comes to mind. There are tricks that are very technical uh, that require a lot of sleight of hand and they're very different, difficult to do. And of course, you're afraid of messing up. So usually you practice so hard on those like an athlete would with a difficult shot because you're so afraid of messing it up. And, and so you don't because you've, you've practiced it so many times. But um, for me personally, what really makes me nervous is working for other magicians. Mm. And um, if you could imagine the experience that we all just had today, um, for a group of people who knows how you're doing what you're doing before you even do it and are sitting back like that, going, eh, well, I might've done it like this or that's okay, but that's really hard because you know, sure. like it's, I'm not getting the applause back, but when you're getting, yeah, yeah. So something you put your whole life into, that's really the hardest performing of magic I've ever done, which right. I've done many, many magic conventions and I, I dread them. <laughs> yeah. And speaking of that, we have a comedian. Well, we have a singer songwriter duo tomorrow and then a comedian on Thursday. So if you're around and you want to join in and, put your mic off and help because that's got to be really tough to perform virtually doing comics or uh, doing comedy. So to give that feedback, you know, it's probably really helpful. Yeah. Such a different setting. Did anybody else have any other questions? Andy Crestadina, he is speaking later today. He says, Alexander, you were awesome, which well, thank we, you, Andy. I agree. Appreciate that. Okay. Nikolai, how often do you refresh your trick lists or do you perfect what you already have? Good question. That's good. Um, they, they have a saying in magic and, I, and it's probably true enough. They say just about the time you're getting sick of doing something is when it's audience ready. Mm. Uh, in other words, you should be so comfortable with the technical doing of the thing that you can forget about it and focus on the audience because the interaction between me and the audience is really the, the key thing. And when you're going A, B, how do, do I fold this way or that way? It's not enjoyable. So, you know, every, to be honest with you, every six months, I'll kind of look at what I'm doing and I'll have one new thing I want to work in. And we're at that stage now. There's something that I didn't invent that I just thought was amazing. And the step began, you know, I saw the technical work behind it. I showed it to my wife. I said, do you think this is as amazing as I do? She did. So now I'm going to start working on it and doing the steps. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's like watching a baby walk. It's going to be ugly and I'm going to stumble. But when it gets good, then I'll test it in front of some friends. And then I'll maybe put it in a safe place in my show where there's already a strong beginning and end. Mm -hmm. And just like learning to walk, eventually it might become you know, the ending of my show or something. Right. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Alex. We really enjoyed that. It was a good mix uh, to Pleasure. break up workshops with some magic. So thank you. Thank you guys. Have a great day.
Thanks everyone. Thank you so much for being here and sticking around for the magic show. And I just want to let you know that you can find Alex and his entertainment at alexandermagic.com. I will share that in the chat. And please be sure to return at 4 p.m. Eastern today. We have Andy Crestedina talking about the content-driven AVM strategy, how to use research-backed content to fill the pipeline. Really excited for that one. So we'll see you later. This event uh, link will stay open, but we will be pausing and coming back to the same session link. So we'll see you guys in a bit. Thank you so much.